Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. This video is going to be focused on the S&P 500 that after rejecting off this uh, trend line, uh, downtrend line resistance that really has defined the uh, correction ever since the start of 2022. We rejected off that and we've had a couple of very violent red days here. So this video is going to be making a quick recap of where we stand in the market. What are the important events uh, coming ahead of us uh, next week? how the market could react to those events and what kind of opportunities could uh, present themselves along the way. We've got a big, big day coming up ahead of us on Friday that's going to determine a lot of things uh, just for the next few weeks. So we're going to talk about that in this video and what to expect. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to smash that like button. And also, if you are new here, make sure to smash that subscribe button if you're interested in following these crazy markets with us. And now without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so as a quick recap of what the market is sensitive to, it is sensitive to rates, it is sensitive to the bond market and to the Federal Reserve because the Federal Reserve has a tremendous impact on what happens with the bond market. So let's put up the two year yield, for example, and this is something we've shown many, many times before. But really, this correction that we've had uh, on the S&P 500 has been led by the two year yield moving higher. In fact, the bottom of the market coincided with the top in the two year yield just uh, a few weeks ago. Now, ever since that occurred, we've had a massive, massive run up on the S&P 500, an 18% run up on the S&P 500. But the two year yield hasn't done much, it hasn't declined very much. So I want to show you a couple of uh, interesting charts from last week's S&P 500 update, uh, where we highlighted First of all, this chart here of the inflation rate versus the uh, S&P 500, clearly the S&P 500 front running uh, the peak in inflation. And we highlighted that the market may be running ahead of itself as some intermarket dynamics like oil and the two year yield are not confirming the extent of the move that we've seen so far. Now, why am I uh, saying this? Because the two year yield was actually rising here uh, while the market was Topping. So we know that the correction was driven by the uh, move down in the market. We saw an 18% recovery on the stock market here uh, that was fueled by this decline and readjustment in the two year yield. But you see the two year yield here rising again. So the market is currently readjusting itself here because the two year yield has not been able to roll over. The final piece of information as a background context to what we're going to talk about here is this paragraph here, the 2022 bullish case is based on valuation expansion. So when that's the case, when you're expecting the market to go higher because of valuations, it has to be led with yields moving down. So whether that's the longer end of the curve or the shorter end of the curve, you need to see bond yields to roll over. And that's often accompanied with a more uh, dovish Federal Reserve. So that's what's been happening here. The market has been reconsidering how far it ran up on this move here because the two year remains elevated. Uh, you've actually had uh, inflation expectations uh, on this chart here. I'm going to quickly show you inflation expectations uh, have risen. And that's actually coincided with the exact moment where the S&P 500 reversed lower. And so the market here is pricing in for this Friday on the Jackson Hole meeting, uh, where Fed Powell is going to speak, they're pricing in that he's going to be hawkish because of those uh, rising inflation expectations and the fact that the two year yield has not rolled over, right? Right now, the market is pricing in around a 50% chance of a 50 basis point hike and a 50% chance of a 75 basis point hike for the September 2022 Fed meeting. So that means that the market is still going to be surprised either way. If the Fed decides on a 75 basis point hike and sounds very hawkish, talks about inflation and the fact that they need to continue their tightening path very aggressively, that's going to spook the market. You'd likely see the uh, two year yield continue uh, rising. You'd likely see this type of uh, move and potentially 
uh, take out the previous high in the two year yield and the market would likely move down in a big way. So if the Fed starts getting hawkish, you're looking at an undercut of the 4,085 point level and potentially even a move back down to this zone right here between uh, 3,800 and 3,900 points. That's if the market gets spooked by the Fed on Friday and completely reconsiders uh, how much of the Fed pivot was priced in here, right? Because that's what this rally was. It was the Fed pivot being priced in. Now, we think that's coming very soon, but perhaps not that soon. A lot of things were priced in very quickly here. Markets got hot and optimistic. Things don't go up in a straight line. You're going to see stair-step price action, and this is what's happening right now. Uh, now, on the flip side, right, so that's if the market gets spooked by the Fed. Fed is very hawkish. You're looking at around these targets here. If you end up having a 50 basis point hike and the Fed starts uh, highlighting that the economy is, is weakening, that they've made a lot of progress in terms of their tightening so far and that they've seen a lot of uh, improvements in the data, that they've seen improvement in their fight against inflation. If they start to talk about all those things, that's going to sound a lot like a pivot. And considering the market here is preparing for hawkish Fed, I think you'd see a breakout on that type of talk. If the Fed starts to highlight these things, you're looking at a breakout above this uh, downtrend line and the next target is 4,650 points. Now, in summary, in the short term, the market could go up, it could go down, it could go sideways, backwards, you name it. And this is what I try to say in every video. I, I'm not a mind reader, I don't know what the Fed is going to say. If I had to guess what they're going to say on Friday, I would say that they will come out hawkish one final time here. They lost a lot of credibility because of the uh, transitory inflation uh, narrative that they had for quite some time, which uh, ended up being completely false. Now they have to take inflation seriously. They really cannot uh, pivot before seeing a material move down in inflationary numbers. We've really only had one week CPI reading here, so it might be a little bit premature here to expect a pivot so soon. I'm not sure the Fed is going to sound extremely dovish here. Where I can give you some conviction is that we think a Fed pivot and a peak in the two-year yield is, and a rolling over in the two-year yield, is not very far away. Now, this is one of the charts on the oil article that we posted last week, but it's not just about oil, it's about everything that's going on. And it might look complicated here, but this is the two-year yield, right, in blue, and it shows you the massive rise in the two-year yield that we've already seen so far throughout the last year. Every time you get this type of rise, the PMI ends up coming down into the contraction area, right? That happened in 2006, it happened in 1995, it happened in 1985, it happened in 1989, and in 1985. All of these peaks in the two-year coincided with major major market bottom. As the economic data was weakening, the Fed could step off the brakes a little bit, sound a little bit more dovish, and that systematically creates rallies on the S&P 500. And another big, big proof of that is the fact that the yield curve is inverted in a big, big way just over the past few uh, months. This is another sign of financial tightening. When you have the yield curve go inverted, it's telling you there's a lot of tightening happening in the economy. And this is why yield curves predict recessions. They predict downturns. Usually when you have a yield curve that's inverted, it's very often uh, coincides with a Fed pivot. If you look at 1989, the yield curve inversion was followed by a Fed pivot. In 1995, you had the yield curve go very close to inversion. And same thing here in 1998, very close to inversion. Uh, the Fed pivot, uh, and again here in 2006. So even before a global financial crisis, this dynamic does tend to work, where you have the slowdown begin, the Fed stops tightening, the market starts to get excited about the easy money that's coming ahead, right? And this is what was happening in 2006, 2007. And then potentially you get a hard landing that takes a lot of people off guard and takes the market down in a big, big way. And this is partly the reason why we love uh, the bond market right now, uh, TLT, that uh, currently uh, giving a 3% uh, 
uh, yield for the next 30 years every year. When you look at periods where the yield curve is inverted, it is typically the best moment to be entering the bond market. When you've had a drawdown in bonds and the yield curve is inverted, you typically want to be uh, long on TLT, long on treasury bonds. TLT, by the way, uh, testing the bottom uh, range of this price channel that it's been in since 2007 and also forming a nice bottoming pattern that kind of looks like a head and shoulder pattern here although we did see a false breakout uh, last week but this this bottoming pattern is intact this is one of the big focus points that we have at game of trades is not just being focused on the stock market but also being focused on any other opportunity elsewhere whether that's uh, in the bond market whether that's precious metals uh, that are often major hedges against a deleveraging in the financial system, uh, global markets, whether that's emerging markets or European markets, we're looking at that very carefully. Commodities, we've recently given a price target for oil prices uh, last week. And of course, crypto, a massively and rapidly growing sector of the economy where we think if you're positioned at the right moment can lead to huge opportunities. So treasury bonds are one of the big things that we're currently looking at on the watch list because we do think that they are a major hedge against the tail risk of a collapsing financial system which could take the market down in a big way. Treasury bonds in that type of environment uh, can lead to some crazy, crazy returns. So if you're interested in keeping up to date on all of these uh, assets, on what the current market structures look like, where the opportunities are, realistic targets and calls uh, for these assets, make sure to test out the, the free trial that we have on the website. Uh, it's seven days completely for free, and you can test out the ins and outs of the service to see if that's something you could take advantage of. So visually on this chart, uh, you have the September meeting that's around right here, I'll pull a vertical line. Uh, we could see the market get spooked on Friday, that's possible. We'll see what happens on Friday. These support levels at 3,800, 3,900 points and 3,085 points should act as nice areas of support. Now that's about all I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.